Okay, so what we're going to do here is a quick introduction to programming and we're going to start off by introducing you to um, creating projects and working our way through this. So I, we're going to go through a couple of environments first. Uh, so normally we work in either Eclipse or we work in Replit. So let's figure out how to create a project in both these environments. So this is my base REPL project. I'm in my grade 10 project folder. I'm in my lesson demos folder inside REPLIT. And I'm going to create a folder in here called uh, introduction because this is our introduction to programming. There we go. And where did I put that? There it is. And now I want to create a new REPLIT. So I'm going to go up here and hit the plus sign for new REPLIT. And I want to make sure that I choose Java. If I don't see it pop up here, it's one of my favorites because I've been doing it. I can just type in Java and we want this guy right here, Java Replit. We want to give it a name. Now the name needs to be using mixed case. Mixed case means no spaces, no special characters, all alphanumeric, which means letters and numbers only. And when I do this, I want to separate every word by simply capitalizing the first letter of each word. We always want it to be three words or less if we possibly can. So I'm going to call this, uh, let's say, programming intro. I'll just say prog intro, nice and short. Okay. Now, you guys won't have this privacy, this public or private option. It's because I have a paid account. So yours will automatically be public. It doesn't really make a difference. And I'm going to create, I'm going to click create REPL. And it's going to automatically create a Java program, which is going to look like garbage to start with. That's okay. We'll fix that in a second. Um, so when I want the, this to be cleaned up, first of all, I want to get all of, get rid of all the auto-generated stuff because I'm not going to need that. So I'm going to delete this stuff here. I'm going to delete this stuff up here. I don't need any of this. We're just going to get rid of it all. The next thing I want to do is clean up my code so it's nice and symmetrical. So I want each one of these opening and closing brackets to be on their own line and lined up with their closing bracket. So opening lined up with closing. Opening lined up with closing. If you notice, if I put my cursor just before this, it highlights the associated closing bracket. That will help me make sure that everything is organized. Now I don't need this line of code here because this is just kind of auto-generated for me just to make sure code works, but I'm going to click run and we'll see it run in the console over here. There's my hello world. If I ever want to clear the console, I just got to click this button here, clear that, and it empties it out again. Now I don't actually need this line, so I'm going to get rid of it. So when you first start a new Replit Java program, this is what it should look like to begin with. Nothing else. We see over here the names of the files in our program main.java is the, pro the file that we are going to be working in. There's lots of settings you can play with too. Like right now I'm on dark mode. I can change that. I can also change the layout so my console goes below my, my code instead of to the side of my code. But that's pretty much it when it comes to Replit. It's very easy. Replit can sometimes slow down though, so we don't always use it very much. We use it when we have to, not when we, not when we uh, just on a whim. I'll, I'll, however, we go to the other side, and this is Eclipse, Industry Standard Tool, one of two major ones, this one and IntelliJ. So let's see how we create a new Java project here. First, File, New, Java Project. If you don't see Java Project here, click Project, and then there'll be another option to, see, to choose Java Project in there. I want this. I'm going to give it a name. I'll give this one the same name since I'm trying to demonstrate the same thing. So let's say Program Intro. I want to make sure that I have Java SE 1.8 selected. This is what we're going to be using all semester long. If you followed all the installation instructions, it should be an option there for you. Once I have that, I'm just going to click Finish, and then we'll automatically add it over here to my project tree over here. I'm going to click the little, down, the little uh, arrow here, and this is going to expand all my files. SRC is short for source, as in source code. So I want to click on this, right click, and say new class. We have to add that main.java file because it doesn't exist in Eclipse by default. Eclipse kind of makes you do everything. So we're going to name it just main, capital M, and I want to check this box down here, public static void main. This makes it the main file of our program. And just click finish. And now you can see this code, assuming you put all your formatting, you added the formatting file like you're supposed to, should look exactly like this. And again, we can get rid of this auto-generated code. And now if you look at this program versus the one on here, they're pretty much identical. The only difference is, is that on Replit, it uses two spaces for a tab. In uh, Eclipse, it uses four spaces for a tab. But other than that, everything is 100% identical. 
So now we know how to set up our Java projects. What does this code or what does this layout actually mean? Well, a few things to keep in mind here. This, everything on here is special. Every one of these words has meaning. The, these are all key words in the Java dictionary. The only exception are the names, and there's only three names here. There's main with a capital M. This is our main class or our main file, main.java. There's main here, which is our main method. And then here is the name of this thing. This, we'll get into this later, it's called a string array. This is the name of that. Everything else is a key word that exists inside of Java. So it's part of the dictionary. So what are all the parts of a Java program? First up, up here, eventually we'll start including extra libraries. So our libraries are gonna go here. Now, libraries are basically pre-built code um, that we can access that somebody else wrote for us. It's going to allow us to do some fun, fancy things in our programs, just not yet. We're not quite there. So that's going to go near the top of your program, above your class line. Your class line, this is the class line here. These two slashes just make sure I don't break my program. This, uh, this is your class line. And what the class line is, is basically it's kind of like the container for your entire file. Now I say container because we see these opening and closing brackets. With every set of opening and closing brackets, they act like a container. Anything inside of a set is owned by the thing above it. So in this case, everything inside of this set of brackets is owned by the main class, which means all this stuff. Anytime we go inside a set of brackets, we're going to indent to show that ownership. So we can see that it's part of it, it's inside of it, okay? The next piece is this. Let me just write down a class line here. The next piece is this line right here. This is what we call the main method. More specifically, the main method signature line. A signature is something that is unique. Every method or block of code within our program is going to have a unique signature line. And that's so the program, the compiler, can separate each one from the other one so it knows which ones we're talking about at any given time. The main method is called the main method because this is where all of our program logic goes. Your code here. Okay? So this is where you do your, your statements to like write on the screen and all those kinds of fun things. And that's pretty much it. I'll go into more detail about uh, what methods are and things like that. We don't need to dig uh, too much more into that kind of thing. But what it is, what is important here is that you need to understand that everything on here is important. So we have our keywords that are important. The curly brackets, opening and closing. For every opening one, there's a closing one. They act as that container, like I said. Curly brackets, braces, parentheses, whatever you want to call them. The next thing is case. Case is super important. What I mean by that is something like this. Uh, let's say the word class is not equivalent to the word class with a lowercase c. Those are two different things, which is why one was highlighted because it's a keyword, and the other one was not even recognized because the, the it doesn't exist inside the dictionary. So we can't actually take advantage of it. We see it right here. So here the class is called main with a capital M, but the main method is called main with a lowercase m. Those are two different things to the compiler. So it recognizes them separately. So when you make a spelling mistake in your code, chances are it's because you did something like this. So case is important. So you gotta make sure you keep, uh, keep your eye on these kinds of things. And from this point forward, it's just a matter of making sure that your code is clean, you're indenting properly, you're putting the proper brackets, you're spelling everything correctly, and you should be good to go at that point. So that's it for your basic introduction to programming. Good luck and have fun.